us everyone welcome to the charvak podcast this is your host kushal mehra my guest today is a formal special secretary of india's external intelligence agency or as we call it the research and analysis wing raw his name is gbs siddu and today we're going to talk about siddu saab's book the khalistan conspiracy a former rnaw officer unravels the paths to 1984 siddu sir thank you very much for coming on the podcast My pleasure to be talking to you on my book, The Khalistan Conspiracy. So, sir, we'll start here. When did you maybe take the decision of uh, pinning down the entire journey of uh, your involvement uh, as uh, an officer of the government of India, and and you were placed all over the world? And we'll go into the details of the book. But when did you finally decide that I have to write a book on this? Actually. I right from the beginning I knew that I have to write two books, one on Sikkim, on this second on the Khalistan Conspiracy. But I thought, and I also feel that one must try to observe the restrictions placed by official secret sect, which mentioned that no such book can be written before the lapse of thirty years of the incident. So after thirty years. then i had my wife was not well she was sick she had cancer so she died in 2017 so uh, soon after that i first wrote my book on sikkim sikkim dawn of democracy about my operation emerging sikkim then soon after that when it was published i started writing this book the khalistan conspiracy which was published in october 2020 So you start the book with your journey to Canada and the diaspora in the late seventies, and and I'm someone who has lived in Canada, who is uh, going back to Canada again the end of this month, and the diaspora of the seventies and the diaspora today has a sea change. So could you talk about the the early seventies and your interactions with the diaspora and and the nascent uh, steps of the Khalistan movement over then and how it was very different then? Actually, soon after my operation related to the merger of Sikkim was over, I was posted as first secretary in the High Commission of India Ottawa, where I remained posted for three years. From September nineteen seventy six to September nineteen seventy nine, being in charge of consular and commercial affairs, I travelled widely. I must have visited most of the major towns more than two three times, sometimes by road, sometimes by air, and I came to know lots of Punjabis, especially majority of them were six at that time. And during my interaction in three years time, I came to know that there were only Two persons who used to either talk about Khalistan or propagate Khalistan. One was Professor Uday Singh of Sudbury. He was professor in the Laurentian University, professor of mathematics. He used to only talk about the need for Khalistan so that the Sikhs can have a better future. But he never propagated. Went out so out of his house or anybody who used to meet him, he used to say all that. Another person was Kuldeep Singh Sodi. who used to call himself a council general of khalistan both of them were toronto based he was jagjit singh chauhan's man who was a known isi agent and also was close friend to some of the us republican leaders so everybody knew but for just for curiosity sake people used to buy khalistan passport khalistan stamps and khalistan mementos etc but everybody used to take him as a joke and this can be indicated from the fact that sometime in march 1979 i was called to attend a sick first sick conference in toronto and was one of the speakers there when my turn came to speak no sooner did i stood up kuldeep singh sodi was sitting in the audience he started he, he stood up and said Mr. G. B. Singh, my passport name is G. B. Singh. He is an agent of Muradji Desai government. At that time, Muradji Desai was the prime minister, and he should better explain how the Sikhs in Punjab are being treated. He is misleading us. So no, no sooner did he say so, he was picked up from the chair by four or five Sikh young men, and he was thrown out of the hall. So this much was the respect that he enjoyed. 
In June 1978, I got a letter from my joint director telling me, Sidhu, you should not be wasting your time covering Gurdwara politics. So RNAW was not even interested in minor things. I used to say that some of the Granthis, Sevadars, or you can say Ragis coming from Punjab are having orthodox views and they are spreading some sort of information or misinforming people about Sikhs and Hindu relations. Mm. <laughs> that, so that they can advise the Akalis or SCPC that please do something and be careful in sending such people over to Canada. So this was at that time the status of these people. About people, but at that time, can be, six of Canada still had fond memories of the role played by the six in the gather movement. And 3,000 families, six families, sold everything, all their properties, and shifted to India in the hope that they will be participating in that mutiny will start after the Gadar movement takes roots in Punjab. Unfortunately, there you can say conspiracy was uh, dis uh, discovered and quite a few people were hanged at that time. So that was the situation in Canada. But generally my friends used to feel that how come Congress is hobnobbing with Bindra Wale? They used to be, but they, they didn't have much idea uh, they never had any, even in Gurdwaras, Khalistan was not at all an issue. It was not even discussed at that time. But in India, during the same period, till the end of 79, I'm talking about the period till the end of 79 in Canada. Now I shift to India. I was, I, I, I was born in Patiala, brought up, educated there. I was teaching in two years for, in, the, in Naba, government college Naba. I knew only four, three, four people who used to talk about Khalistan. The most important out of them was Kapoor Singh ICS. He was dismissed. And then Jagji Singh Chauhan was there. Then Dr. Sohan Singh and Simran Ji Singh Man. They had a small following, but as a movement, it was not at all. I have quoted B.G. Deshmukh, who was additional secretary home, ICS officer, very well regarded officer, who later on becomes cabinet secretary. He has written in his book, from Pune to Prime Minister, that he visited Punjab by road sometime in the middle of 79. He talked to Sikh cultivators in the field. They treated him so well. He talked to Hindu industrialists in Ludhiana. They also said the situation is very peaceful. He went to Golden Temple, talked to some SGPC members. Their only complaint was that the young Sikhs are not interested in religion. They are only partying, etc. The pilgrim, pil pilgrims also told that they are very happy. They, they did tell him that Bindrawal is moving around, but he had no influence at that time. So when he returns to his office, he tells his joint secretary that Punjab is a haven of peace and tranquility. This is I'm talking about middle of 79. But his joint secretary says that the Congress is hobnobbing with Bindrawal. He will create trouble for Congress later on. So this is the situation till the end of 79, both in Canada and in, in Punjab. So, so maybe we can talk a, a little bit about Janel Singh Pindrawale. So what exactly was Janel Singh Pindrawale? He was head of a Dum Dummy Taksal. Taksal is a mint. You can say the students, it was a seminary when students were admitted, they used to live there, get, get training about six scriptures. So he was the 14th head of Damdami Taksal, a man from the rural background, but had knowledge about scriptures. That is why his guru, Kartar Singh, had selected him over and above his son uh, as the 14th head. Kartar Singh died in an accident and Bhandra Walid took over from him. So this is his background. So Bindrawal is being cultivated is a later issue. So this is more the Bindrawal is background. So if we go to the book here, I have written the book in the, in the form of an RNAW operation, which had two phases. Number, phase, first phase was 
directed towards disturbing the alliance between a Kali Dal government led by Prakash Singh Badal and Janta Party alliance. So when Zail Singh lost the 1977 election in Punjab, this alliance government took place. So he discussed this thing and he told Sanjay Gandhi that if we can use some sort of a high sounding or khadku sant, which can start criticizing the moderate policies of the Kalis, badal led government, they will have to adopt much more stringent type of policy, pro Khalis, pro Sikh policy, pro village policy, which will be at the varia at variance with the Hindu Hindu city type businessman interest, which was being taken care of by the Janta Party. So this was their plan one. Now every operation has a plan as to how that plan is to be achieved and who will be the persons who will be running this operation. Plan was to destabilize the Kali Dal Janta Party alliance. Then how to implement this plan? The plan was to be implemented through what I have called Bhindra Wale Khalistan operation. The Bhindra Wale will create differences or frighten the Hindus. A Khalistan issue will be raised in order to create an impression amongst the Hindus and rest of Indians that India is going to be dismembered. So that with, but this did not succeed. They could not, they, they, didn't, they were not able to destabilize the government and Bindrawale could not do much during this period. That can be judged from the fact that this SGPC, Sri Gurdwara Paramanta Committee, there were 140 members and the election was there in 79. Out of 140, he could only get four of his candidates elected. And in 1980, general elections, when the elections were held, he supported Congress candidates, three Congress candidates, openly and propagated R.L. Bhatia, then even this Sri Gurdjian Singh Bindran. And, but he, he, did, he was not a very, you can say, voice to be considered as an influential voice. One good advantage of this operational phase one was that the Congress people, the senior Congress, Ben Ramwale, I said, Gani Zail Singh, Sanjay Gandhi, then Mrs. Gandhi and Kamal Nath was part of the first operation. They were the people who, they found that Ben Ramwale has taken the bait and he was willing to play a bigger role as and when they need his services. So this was the end of phase one. And phase two operations started after Mrs. Gandhi came to power in June in January 1980 election. In this, Sanjay Gandhi told his mother that we won the 1971 election on Gribi Halau, Gribi Hatao manifesto with two-third majority. Even after liberating Bangladesh, merging Sikkim with India, we had ultimate to, to declare emergency in 1975 under pressure from Jay Prakash Narayan's movement seeking dismissal of Mrs. Gandhi's government. So he suggested that 77 defeat was very, very bad. We should now plan that we should win the next election due before January 1985 on Khalistan Wale issue. So we will raise up the profile of Wale and we will raise the profile of Khalistan movement so that in the end, before, few months before the election, we will come heavily on Bendra Wale so that he is he, he and his followers are demolished or destroyed. So the Hindus will come, Hindu will be glad at that time that the enemy has been destroyed and they will vote heavily in our favor. This was the plan. Plan was this, Khalistan Bendra Wale issue was the, how to implement this plan. And persons who were operating at that time with Sanjay's death in June 1980, his role was taken by Rajiv Gandhi. Rajiv Gandhi was closely guided by Arun Nehru and Foteda. They were the two main persons. Later on, Arun Singh from Kapoorthala family, he also joined, and Kamal Nath continued to be with them. So this is how what the plan was for winning the next elections, and that was Khalistan Bindrawale issue. So when we say 
the idea of Khalistan, there is this uh, thing always said that Bhindra wale per se never use the word Khalistan. How much truth there is attached to it? Actually, I have personally known and, I have, and other writers of contemporary writers have also written this thing that throughout his life, Bhindra wale never asked for Khalistan. What he used to say is in Punjabi that agar bibi meri choli vich pa degi Khalistan ta na bhi nahi karanga if if mrs gandhi puts khalistan in my life i will not refuse so that was and secondly i have quoted an rti activist gupta according to him the reply received from the home ministry says that till the death of mr bhendra wale there was no criminal case pending against him so mm. this is and that is why because bindra wale never demanded khalistan and his support was enlisted by zail singh and sanjay gandhi in the previous operation so they thought that bindra wale they did not enlist for religious prachar dharm prachar ke liye thoda court usko enlist kiya tha they do thought that they should raise an organization which should demand khalistan and should support bhendra wale so that ultimately people should start believing that bhendra wale also wants khalistan here they raised dal khalsa gani zal singh raised dal khalsa in mm-hmm. middle of 1978 chandigarh first meeting in a roma hotel newspaper said the bill of 600 rupees was paid by zal singh and subsequent press conference dal khalsa where they have said they want independent six state that bill was also paid by congress leaders and bhendra wale na no, jail singh as home minister used to call the local press jalandhar and even chandigarh that dal khalsa news should come on the first page so that is the same dal khalsa people who hijacked the plane from srinagar to delhi to lahore on september 29 1981 when bindra wale was arrested in lala jagatnath's murder so their one of the demands was that please release bindra wale so this further strengthened the belief among the people that bindra wale wants khalistan yeah but uh, it's very interesting in your book i think it's uh, uh, you talk about that bbc current affairs program panorama right aap uske bare mein baat karte ho where uh the closest indira gandhi ever came to admitting that they were uh, she not directly but some of her members were in touch with pindra wale actually i have quoted mark telly and steve jacobs book and they said so but i don't think it is and secondly why should when mrs gandhi meet she had other people to contact him possibly one or two secret meetings must have taken place yeah but then uh, what do you make of that violent skirmish that bhindra wale had with uh, the other sikh sect where uh, that was the time it, where uh, the terror started now it was it is april 13th 1979 uh, it was nirankaris who had their annual session in amritsar and it was the badal government at that time which gave permission because of their alliance with janta party nirankaris are heretic six consider them as nirankari as heretics that they be, because they believe in sick living sick living guru and they don't believe fully in sikhism so holding a meeting in amritsar the holiest place of the sikh that was not liked by the people who were gathered in um, in golden temple and fauja singh one of the serving in agriculture in, in, inspector he took out a procession for harmandir sahab to disturb their convention vindra wale went along with them for some distance and returned he never went there ultimately fauja singh attacked the convention and nirankaris were prepared for that 13 six lost their lives including fauja singh and three nirankaris were killed also it is because of this incident the khand kirtani jatha led by fauja singh's wife amarjit kaur had always criticized and described bindra wale as a coward he she even attacked him while he was uh, living in guru nanak nivas and it is said that it is because of her 
ਅਖੰਡ ਕੀਰਤਨੀ ਜਥਾ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਐਂਡ ਬੱਬਰ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਦੈਟ ਬੈਂਡਰਾ ਵਾਲੇ ਸ਼ਿਫਟਡ ਟੂ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਔਨ 15th ਦਸੰਬਰ 1983 तो सर इसके बारे में आपने लिखा हुआ बुक में यू यू टॉक अबाउट द द पॉलिटिकल टसल बिटवीन यानी जेल से जेल सिंह एंड दरबारा सिंह नाउ व्हाट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली व्हाट दिस टसल वेयर डिड दरबारा सिंह कम फ्रॉम वेयर डिड जेल सिंह कम फ्रॉम व्हाट रोल्स डिड दे प्ले एक्चुअली देयर ऑल पंजाब पॉलिटिशियंस एंड बोथ ऑफ देम सब्सक्राइब टू डिफरेंट आइडियोलॉजीज दरबारा सिंह हेल्ड अ सेकुलर इमेज and jerry zelsing didn't bother he exploited the six sentiments to attract votes to sikh votes and the creation of guru gobind singh marg where he followed this road is connecting all the gurdwaras uh, on the way where guru gobind singh left chamkor and reached talwandi sahib so he participated in the profession throughout so there are two different persons and this type of difference in ideology of both was taken advantage by the central congress leadership so they play always play one against the other yeah and uh, a few incidents that were really shocking to me like in the book you talk about on 9 september 1981 dala jagat narayan proprietor of a chain of newspapers published from jalandhar was shot dead near ludhiana jagat narayan's influential daily punjab kesari had been critical of pindrawale and narayan who had been mm-hmm. present at the clash between the sikhs and the nirankaris had testified in court against bidra wale mm-hmm. punjab case used of taking a pro nirankari stand now now this is uh, now can we say that maybe from the early 80s to mid 80s was when uh, when uh, pindra wale and his his ugra roop if i was to use uh, indian terminology uh had started to really come out in its most uh, dastardly way actually let us deal with the day uh, lala jagtnan was murdered he was in chandokala in asar district on a preaching mission so he knew that he will be named in that he left and came overnight reached there in chok mehta his head quarters and quite a few people say that he was provided by bhajan lal ji minister of haryana a car to escape also one of my very close friend divakar das gupta was dig headquarters in bsf he told me that their pickets used to stop bindra wale every time he used to cross their picket but home minister's office used to say please let him go so they allowed him to go and so he was arrested on 20th of september from his his headquarters and chok mehta the way he was to be arrested it was another dramatic arrest mrs the defense minister white raman he called general sena who was the gsc in c western command his staff officer general bakshi and said that they would need a gorkha battalion to arrest vendra wale from chok mehta and then general sena said that he wants to meet mrs gandhi and talk to her about this decision he did not agree with that it is not a job of the army he said then after that zarwara singh called him also please help us in arresting then his chief secretary he called him that they need army tanks to arrest vendra wale so it, it, he did not agree at all ultimately he two two ips officers led by uh, led the uh, force through which he was arrested but jathedar santok singh chairman of delhi gurdwara prabandhan committee who was very close to mrs gandhi he went there and he made a fiery speech before bindra wale was arrested to so during that even bindra wale also made a fiery speech but in which three persons were killed so he was taken to firozpur jail i have written there based on the contemporary writings that Bindra Wale was shifted within ten days to Kanal Guest House. He was not in prison. That the investigating police officer used to call him Janab, sir. How how do you what do you say? So that type of investigation was carried out, and ultimately he was released. When Jail Singh made a statement in the parliament that there is no evidence, we did not find any evidence, and Bindra Wale was being released. 
Yeah, and I, I remember the quote from your book where you say, according to Kuldeep Nayar, Zell Singh himself telephoned Haryana Chief Minister Bhajan Lal and told him not to arrest Bindra Wale and not get involved in the case. And then you obviously, ta- you did mention about Satish Jacob that uh, the Haryana Chief Minister went as far as to send an official car <laughs> to Chandokala to drive Bindra Wale to his Gurdwara. I mean, what were they thinking, sir? When you play with fire, what, what were they thinking was going to happen? Here, I would like to quote again when this Kuldeep Nayar, Beyond the Line, his autobiography, in which he has written that one day he talked to Kamal Nath and asked him about Bhindravali. He said that we interviewed two Sikh sons. One son was a docile person, and Bhindravali, we found the most suitable to attack those moderate Akalis when they wanted to destabilize the Kalis of Janta Party lines. He said, we interviewed and selected Vendravali. And Kamalath also reportedly told Kuldeep Nair that we used to send him money from time to time. But Kamalath again writes says that we were surprised when Vendravali became a terrorist. I have written that in the hearts of hearts, these people, one or quarter of people must be very happy that he is doing their bidding, creating some sort of a terror in the minds of the Hindus also. Here it is. So ultimately, now we should take up Operation 2. When the Operation 2 started, the, as I mentioned, the purpose was to win the next election due 485. The plan was to use Bindram Valley Khalistan issue at a much higher level. And the persons who were, as uh, I mentioned, a one or four road group, they were there. So now, how to fill in this gap? The elections are still four years ago. Fine hands. So they cannot. The Punjab must be kept at a boiling stage. But at the same time, they adopted two methods. Number one was open dialogue with the Akali Dal leadership, moderate Akali Dal leadership, and give him the hope that most of their demands we will meet. Second thing is, they will they they told the RNAW and Mr. Kao, Mr. Jo Kao was the founder secretary of RNAW. When RNAW was formed in September 1968, he was the man. And he retired when Murarji Desai became prime minister. So he was brought as senior advisor in August 1981. He had already joined there. So they, they told our RNAW and Kao to prepare for SFF, Special Frontier Force, which very highly specialized commando force in the Directorate General of Security, a part of RNAW. So to pick up Bindra Wale, either from Chok Mehta, then later on from Guru Nanak Nawaz, and lastly from the Langar Roof, when he had shifted to Akaltak and Langar Roof, he used to address the audience, give his um, lectures there. So these were the two methods they adopted, how to prolong this thing. So far as the negotiation or talks with the colleagues are concerned, I have given a chapter of it in which I have mentioned it was a shred. It was a focus, focus, just to keep the thing prolonged and give, by giving hope. 26, P.C. Alexander in his book, he has written, in the corridors of power, that 26 such talks were held. And he ultimately blames every session ended because of the non-cooperative, maybe, attitude of these people. They want Their demands were not possible to be met. He had blamed the Kali leadership for failure. But the reality is that never wanted to give these concessions. Because if the concessions are given, then this peace agitation would have been withdrawn by the Kalis. And then Bindravale had no locus strategy to continue protesting, continue terrorizing people. He would have been forced to go back to Chok Mehta. So they did not want the agitation to be over. But P.C. Alexander very interestingly avoids mentioning the most important of these, talk, of these talks in which Sardar Soren Singh the former external affairs minister and former defense minister, my father-in-law, he was approached by Arjan Singh Longowal because Vintravale had moved to Guru Nanak Nivas in July 1982. 
Vrindavale sent a message either through Badal or Balwan Singh. My father-in-law had shifted to his hometown home in Jalandhar. They said, sir, Vrindavala has shifted to Guru Nanak Nivas. He actually used the word that you people has asked this jinn or bhut to enter golden temple. Now he will take over our peaceful agitation and will take it towards militancy. Before that happens, please help us to find some sort of a way, safe face saving device so that we can withdraw our agitation. So my father, Sardar Swaran Singh met Mrs. Gandhi in sometime in October, first week of October 83, 82. Then he got permission. He met most of the colleagues who were in jail at that time, Badal, then Toda, Balwan Singh, and sought their permission. And long ago while in Golden Temple many times. And later on, collectively, with all these people when they were released from jail and discussed the time trying to find a solution, please tell us what you want. Interestingly, during that period, he also went to meet Bindramwale in his room. And that whether that he met Bindramwale is written by Kuldeep Nair in his book, Beyond the Line. He has written in a different manner that while one day I was sitting in his untidy room, Bindramwale is in Guru Nanak Nivas, there was only one chair which I was occupying. During that period, Sadar Swan Singh walked in and he sat on the floor. And I offered that chair to him. But Sadar Swan Singh said, in the presence of such a big exalted saint, my position is on the floor only. But Kuldeep Nair could never understand the reason for that because Sadar Swan Singh wanted to massage the ego of Bindrawale. Ultimately, he had to get a concession. I actually told uh, Kuldeep Nair one year or two years before his death, about this incident and the real purpose. He knew my father-in-law very well, but he told me that from the behavior of Soren Singh, I did not know he was on that mission. So after everybody had left, Soren Singh shifted to the chair. He told Bindra Wale that, do care you are mistaken if you can achieve your objective through your motorcycle riders. I am surprised, he said, that government has not taken any action against you. If it decides, they can finish your movement in two days. Before that happens, please tell me what you want because I am trying to work out a solution with the consent of Mrs. Gandhi so that this agitation can be over. So he said no. Well, first time he said Hindu, he started complaining against the Hindu government. He said, ultimately, he said this subject is being looked after by Akalis, led by Longwal. You tell me about your personal demands. These were so small, he said, okay, I will go back to Amrik Singh, his guru bhai, his guru's son, and Thara Singh is number two, who were in jail at that time. If they are released, I will go back after the agreement is signed. And it was such a small issue, my father. And then, after all that, Akali shifted to Delhi, where the cabinet subcommittee discussed with them all the details on 2nd of November and 3rd of November. And it's a statement was prepared on 3rd November that this will be read by PC Safety Home Minister next day in the morning. Very futuristic type conciliatory statement. And the Akali, Akali leadership saw that statement and they say, it's okay. This gives us face saving device. And after it is delivered to us at Amritsar on 4th of November morning, we will withdraw the agitation. The, during that period, my father, Sardar Soren Singh, stayed at my residence in Chanakyapuri, that flat. And he, we were sitting, I actually, before that, in March 1980, I did not know actually, the, here I would like to tell you that RNAW, the first branch or division which was opened on Sikh extremism was in December 1980. It means before 1980, there was no branch in RNW. Had there been any Khalistan movement or Sikh extremism abroad, RNW should have failed, definitely a branch. So I will discuss this. There are another issue. In March 1981, I was called by Secretary RNW. I was occupying two most important posts, one of the two of the most important in RNW. I was looking after the RNW's foreign station administration of that. After a few months, I was given additional charge of liaison with foreign intelligence agencies like CIA, MI6, etc. So 
here he no mr santu asked me that siddhu prepare a note for, for to say to be sent to the ministry of external affairs to open to let us open seven new stations in western europe and in north america that is canada and us because we have an information we feel that khalistan movement is going to gain momentum in these areas so we should place our men before that happen so that they can start feeding us the information i did it and in april or may 1981 we shifted to our new building in cjo complex where mr santu kek again told me in july or august 1981 that the siddhu you brief rna w officer of the rank of and above the rank of directors that is dig rank that what is khalistan what type of information they should be looking so this there that same joint director who wrote me that rnw is not interested in gurdwara politics he was also sitting and at that time joint directors were number 2 on directors so i asked him sir what has happened in this last one and a half years you were not interested in gurdwara politics no you want all that he said things have changed a lot since then so again here these three things show that rnw there was no khalistan so this was the khalistan creation was the result of a decision as i mentioned taken in january 1980 so now i come to the sabotage of that november 82 talks which were mediated by sardar swaran singh that statement was shown akali dal people went to amritsar and they were waiting for that statement to be received here i told my father in law okay i have received this information from a friend from patela in march april 1982 few months before that who told me he used to call me virji the virji what should i say i have got a very disturbing information or news from rss workers in patela according to which a decision had been taken by sanjay gandhi in consultation with mrs gandhi that the next election will be won on khalistan bernawal issue and this thing everything started falling in line but really it did not occur to me that this will be the plan i used to think that mrs gandhi want to fix the akalis for their opposition to the emergency because throughout the period emergency remained in force akali jathas used to leave harmandir sahib golden temple and go to arrest shouting anti emergency slogans i thought they are fixed she is fixing them but how then i told my father that look at this is information i do not want if this information is true i do not think your your mediation efforts will be fruitful and i consider this effort as a litmus test to information which i got from my friend he mentioned that you intelligence people have the habit of seeing a ghost behind every bush so i said i wish you all the best i don't want you to fail in this thing but on 4th of november we were sitting in the corridor a call comes from amritsar either badal or mulal singh sir we are waiting for the statement it has not come so he called in my present pranab mukherjee his old cabinet colleague and later on who becomes president of india for now what happened to the statement he says sir today's parliament home secretary home minister will read that thing and then we will send it after 3 4 hours another calls comes from amritsar they the caller said sir the statement has been received it has been totally changed it's a very hard line statement we cannot withdraw our agitation on that and then caller said that longowal has sent his deepest apologies that he will not be withdraw able to withdraw that soon after that sadar sun singh calls pranab mukherjee again and ask him is this information true he says sir unfortunately it is true then he said look here he then pranab asked sir what should we do now he said that i have spent sleepless nights meeting these people so that i thought something can be worked out to save punjab and india but this no the things have been sabotaged i want to be out of this thing please keep me out he never the, all the books have written that sadar swan singh after that never played any role although mrs gandhi wanted to use him so that 
that was the way how things were so that no solution can be worked out i have given four examples in my book when the solution to this problem could have been worked out and education would have been withdrawn but they did not want to education to be withdrawn this was the first one and next was april 1983 25th april 1983 when dig eight as at wall was killed by vendra wali man when he was exiting the golden temple the body was lying for two hours no action was taken darwara singh sent messages to the central government look here golden guru nanak nawaz is not a part of harmandar sahab we can arrest vendra wali from there so he was not arrested next one was february 1984 when they sick of dealing with negotiations in which no useful purpose was served harcharan singh longowal called a meeting of the akali dal in harmandar sahab golden temple he said look okay, we should withdraw this agitation peacefully balwan singh who was very close to pc alexander because he helped him in getting loan for business he stood up that after making so many sacrifices how can we withdraw the agitation so that was also sabotage another issue february i am talking about april 1984 operation sundown it was an operation which was planned to pick up bindra wale while he was delivering lecture on the langar roof through commando operation just like the same thing as osama bin laden was picked up so ssf commando led operation was planned by dgs mr nagrani at that time i met him three four times and got this information the ss commando very senior instructor was called from london to advise as to what should be done so a, a, a sand model was prepared in sasawa one of our bases there in which it was all designed as to how to be picked up how the how the helicopters will land and that model was brought to new delhi and so that crp battalion which was to be used to cordon off of this area could also be briefed and the briefing mr kao it was kao and nagrani ultimately went to one aquad road this is gandhi's residential office to brief her as to how this operation will be conducted i am talking about april 1984 two months before operation blue star then mr nagrani briefed mr gandhi as this is how we will conduct this operation she said what will be the loss mr nagrani said we may lose both our b4 helicopters and maybe 20% commandos out of 12 or 16 commandos in both the helicopters maybe 20 means two three commandos and no no i am not concerned about this but how many civilians will be lost i have written that on the roof not more than 300 civilians would be listening to him and i have also written that even before the helicopters landed the commandos would have killed or neutralized bandawale's guards and people would have ran here and there before the heli- so i said can not one 20 30 people would have been killed and look at this loss mrs gandhi said she can't afford this loss and then she so readily approved the operation blue star in her three meetings on 25th and 27th and 29th may that look at the damage which was done to the people so many thousands of people were killed and darbar akal takht was totally destroyed so sir this is a very shocking revelation that you make in your book that instead of choosing the easier option which was to send a battalion or two battalions on top from the uh, from a specific side inside and you know kind of neutralizing the threat that was inside the darbar sahab which would cause the least and the minimal damage the prime minister has taken the the absolutely crazy option now like who was advising the prime minister then i have written it was one akbar road gang comprising rajiv gandhi arun aru fotedar arun singh kamal nath was a sid at that time and they have they were controlling her actually i have written about in the chapter on blue star that arun nehru i have not written the book i have read that arun nehru said puppy arun nehru uh, related to mrs gandhi and was puppy puppy never wanted blue star i said if she never wanted blue star who 
compels her to take this action. And she being the prime minister, the buck stopped at his table. And she should be held responsible for all that. So I, about the blue star here, again, General, so it was play, it was discussed with Prime Minister on 25th and 27th with the, the three senior officers, P.C. Alexander, Krishna Swami Rosa, and Ka, and then on 29th again by Sundar, uh, by General Vaidya. General Vaidya in the first meeting said that we will lay a siege and cut off water and electricity. Ultimately, the people will surrender. 27th, it was discussed with officers and confirmed. 29th, General Vaidya seeks an urgent meeting in which Mrs. Gandhi was also present. He said, Ke General Sudharji, Chief of Army Staff for the Western Command, he has suggested if we lay the siege, people of Punjab will converge and draw us. That we should just conduct a surgical operation. And when Vaidya said, we will go in and come out, nobody will understand, ever know that what has happened. So this this was the understanding and Mrs. Gandhi readily agreed. And Alexander writes that Mrs. Gandhi had so much faith in the army that she never doubted their capability. Here, compared with the Operation Sundown, did she not have faith in RNW or SSF commanders? So it was ultimately to be decided. And what I will later on discuss, that what I have written in my book has been completely validated in the memoirs of B.D. Pandey, at that time governor of Punjab, the name of the book is In the Service of Free India. The memoirs are published, written by Mr. Pandey by 1985, published by his daughter Ratna, and one year after my book. So there are no connection between these two. He has written 10, 15 things in his book, which he was experiencing on the ground, which had said this was a part of the plan. Now we go back to Operation Blues. Six, seven days before or eight days before, Sundarji asked Mr. Nagrani and Mr. Kao that he would need SSF, SFF commandos. RNW Director General Security still has 150 highly trained commandos, out of which 50% come from the Army, 50% come from BSF and CRPF. And all these people are rotated every three years so that these people became young. So they were, they were asked so that Sundarji, on Sundarji's request, they were given that look here, they were deputed. And then before they were deputed, Mr. Nagrani told me that they sent their civilian employee who had almost grown full beard, who stayed in a Kaltak and her mother saw for three days, prepared all the gun positions of Kaltak. How many people are there? Where are the guns? How many ammunition? What type of people are there? He gave that full information to General Broad before the operation started. And the CO also said that stealth and surprise is the major advantage of commandos. And he suggested that rather than a frontal attack, we should open a small manhole from the rear side of the Kaltas, just adjoining that lane, and throw stun grenades. And people inside there, they will get disoriented. And we will catch everybody, including Vindramali. No, no, Bernard Brand said, this structure cannot be damaged. Ultimately, you see what happened to Akal I have given the photograph of the Akal So, and then the same commandos were sent for frontal attacks. Though he, they knew the position. The first para and these commandos, majority of them were killed and they were sitting ducks and Mr. Nagrani was so sad about the he has to lost majority of his people. So I have again written that Vendra Wale was not to be arrested alive. They could have done it earlier because he could have spilled the beans. So basically, in your assessment, the reality is that Vendra Wale had become a liability. And uh, first he was propped up. After being propped up, now he had to be eliminated because if he was alive, he would have said, Oh, Bibi ne eh kya kita si, Bibi ne oh kita si, menu to ena ne eh kya si, menu te ona ne oh kya si. Basically to translate for others that uh, these people told me to do this, these people told me to do that. Why are you mad at me? Actually, I would say he, he was not, you can't say that liability, he had played his role. He, he, there was no use for him. 
because elections were only six, seven, eight months hence. So at that time, this something like blue star had to happen. Again, I want to quote General B.D. No, B.D. Pandey, Governor B.D. Pandey's memoir, in which he says very interestingly that after taking over as governor on 6th of October uh, 1984, 83, within 10 days he went to call on Mrs. Gandhi. I'm talking about October 1983, that is about six months before Blue Star, in which Mrs. Gandhi said, I will not hesitate in eliminating this terrorist. I will not even hesitate in bombarding Golden Temple if I have to do that. And General and B. B. D. Pandey says I was aghast. I was totally shocked to hear these words. It means she was preparing Pandey for a situation like Blue Star. Yeah, and yeah. again, B. D. Pandey again mentions that after the Blue Star operation was over, he mentions casualties were many. He also mentions that total information about Bangladesh, about Google, about Akal Takht and the number of people the Punjab police had provided with the intelligence bureau. And he also very significantly mentioned that the white paper which was published and presented to the parliament after Blue Star, Punjab government, neither he nor the government, anybody, nobody was consulted in preparing that paper, white paper. So it was all hush hush. It was all, they, they, they wanted to tell the people as to what actually it was not. If you have read my book, I think very carefully, in March 1980, 890, B. Raman, B. Raman, my senior colleague, two, three years senior, he was given the charge of Khalistan, all these things. Then he presented a white paper, RNW's white paper on Khalistan, in which in our auditorium, Lush Auditorium, RNW's, and which 50, 60 senior IPS officer from various organizations, from IB, from Delhi Police, all the, they were presented. No sooner did he finish reading the RNW's white paper, I told Mr. Raman, Mr. Raman, your white paper is full of lies. And I contradicted what he said. So nobody has the guts to counter me. And the meeting ended. Like it. So it was trying to cover up the trap so that people, history, people should not know what happened. But they never knew that there were people like me and Mr. Pandey who will reveal everything. So I have to ask you this question because Bhindra Wale, I understand being created by, you know, this gang, which you call One Akbar Road. But the, the terror he unleashed, innocent Sikh lives, innocent Hindu lives that he took, his men took. Uh, I clearly remember Tavleen Singh coming on the podcast and telling me that anybody that was even that even had a whiff or a suspicion of being a so-called agent of the government would be mercilessly and brutally beaten up, their body chopped into pieces, thrown into the gutters in Amritsar. <laughs> like, did the government not know what this man was unleashing on the innocent people of Punjab? The government actually didn't bother about it. The way when this Blue Star was conducted, they, they, didn't, they should have expected this is going to happen. A few persons killed here and there doesn't bother government as long as they can win votes and they can win elections. I have, but I have mentioned that this religious divide will be taken advantage of by every political party as long as the electorates are ignorant. But this, this is the only time when an operation of that magnitude was planned five years before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sickening. And obviously it ends, your book ends with the chapter on the assassination of Indra Gandhi. So maybe we can talk about that and then I can take a, two, three more questions from our viewers also. So maybe we can talk about, so, so, what happened there exactly? Actually, on 8th of June, 7th, 7th June, the day the Nirvali was killed, I went to Gurdwara Bangla Sahib with my wife and two children to see as to how the six are reacting. The six were standing in groups and criticizing Mrs. Gandhi and Congress for all that massacre. And there was one poster in which it was written in Punjabi, Ke Singh Sahib, Amrik Singh at the Thara Singh no, the Sihe de Kemare Gay, Hun Har Sikh the first one that 
ਕਿ ਇਸ ਬਾਮਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਮਾਰੋ ਮਤਲਬ ਅਮਰੀਕ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੈ ਬੀਨ ਟਾਰਚਰ ਟੂ ਡੈਥ ਇਟ ਮੀਨਸ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਕਿ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਅਰੈਸਟਡ ਅਲਾਈ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਊ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਡਿਊਟੀ ਆਫ ਐਵਰੀ ਸਿਕਸ ਟੂ ਕਿਲ ਦਿਸ ਬ੍ਰੇਵਰੀ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ 8th ਆਫ ਜੂਨ ਆਈ ਮੈਟ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਗਰੀਸ ਗਰੀਸ ਸਕਸੈਨਾ ਹੂ ਹੈਡ ਬਿਕਮ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਐਟ ਦੈਟ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਟੋਲਡ ਹਿਮ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਸੀਨ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ ਦੈਟ ਮਿਸਿਸ ਗਾਂਧੀ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਕਿਲਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ 6 ਮੰਥਸ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਐਵਰੀ ਐਫਰਟ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਪ ਦੈਟ ਕਿਲਿੰਗ he says if that happens there will be large scale killing of the six in delhi and then i said that this is what they want and then gary asked me who are they i say obviously i just say in western countries they will keep on taking advantage of this issue and this is what i told raman also at that time that you have created a situation and which will be taken advantage of by isi and some of the western countries for a long time to come this is what we are facing and then coming to mr gandhi's assassination then uh, i had written message that we were coming towards tugluk road a hindu boy stood in front of us our car it was a pool car he did not allow us to go towards um, ina or aids because he was he, he saw that arjun das and other goons were picking up six and throwing out of the over the bridge or down to the railway track and we came back this side and next morning i got a message it was a holiday i think first of november from gary saxana he says sidhu i am seeing lot of buildings on fire i am sending a ssb guard to you for your safety i told him sir i am living in a government colony very well protected here who will going to do all i no no please tell me if you want it and after that i remember that i used to have very powerful transistor radio on which i used to listen to the world broadcast for my information and news and then during that search i found the police wireless network was there and then air traffic control they were of no use at all they were accidentally discovered i remembered that then i stopped tuned in police wireless network which had three frequencies three three people on the same frequency it was golf 1 2 and 3 but was a commissioner additional commissioner and deputy commissioner so i what i heard during on those three days it, it was shocking it was a shameful behavior of the police out of that i remember seven or eight i have written in my book so then here i would like to mention a book half lion that is written by vinay sitapati he mentioned that soon after taking the charge on oath of prime minister from rajiv, rajiv gandhi's office somebody called home minister narsimha rao telling him that we are taking over your power of police in order to better coordinate the riots the world was riots so what they did was from the next morning they converted the riots into program for three three days which have been covered widely by so many people vinay satpati mentioned that this was the wildest hour of narsimha rao he chose to save his job rather than saving lives of thousands of sikhs so this was a willful and deliberate decision it was a surgical operation to first to take revenge and secondly to ensure victory of congress here i have written that the mrs with the death of mrs gandhi people were uh, doubting whether they will be able to protect our life if they could not protect the life of their mother so again they wanted to ensure victory so that is why this this type of thing continued for three days now again i have mentioned about the 8th gen 8th june incident 21st of october 10 days before mrs gandhi's assassination i was coming with my wife and children from akbar road turning towards sabdarjung sabdarjung road jimkhana club that is the corner is one akbar road that is the office adjacent to mrs gandhi's residence that is one of the gun i saw two constables holding stand guns one of them was a sikh i did not know at that time it was satwan singh i realized later on from the photographs which appeared in the press i immediately told my wife who has brought this man here who has brought the sikh guards this is the surest and easiest way of getting mrs gandhi assassinated the so next morning my son still remembers he was at that time at 10 13 years old next morning in the morning that is about 22nd october i 
wrote a note, handwritten note, and told my PA, Sita Lakshmi, to prepare an envelope, sealed envelope on which it was written to be and to be opened by addressing only, addressed to Mr. Saxena. In which I have written, I saw this thing. I said, okay, this is the easiest way to get killed. Please inquire, do take following action. Number one, remove the Sikh guards from that place immediately as tomorrow will be too late. She can be assassinated anytime. Number two, please inquire who has ordered them back because Mr. Kao had said they should be removed immediately after Mrs. Gandhi, after Blue Star. And then, so after, I, while I finished writing this thing, I thought that discretion is better part of value. Supposing she's assassinated today and my note goes to Gary Saxena, he would not suspect me. But persons who will be informed, who had brought these six back, they will make me as a part of the conspiracy. So I told Sita Lakshmi, please go. I will hand it over personally to Mr. Sikhana, but they shredded the note as well as the envelope. So this is what I knew about that people should have known. There is a paper on Mrs. Gandhi's assassination written by Mr. Kau, lying sealed in Nehru Memorial Library, and it is to be opened in 20, 2025, I think. I, I have written on my book that it must be opened immediately to see what he has written. I think the best part now should be as to what should have, what should be done now. What is the way forward? I have written in that that 13th commis commissions, committees, and societies were appointed. Um, nothing has happened out of it other than otherwise the BJ government has done something last two, three years. For they have removed the blacklist, pruned that thing, and they have sanctioned some amount to Guru Nanak universities and then Kartarpur corridor. All these things happened. But I have written that till the basic requirements are met, the anti Indian forces, including ISI in Western countries, will continue to take advantage of this situation. And the solution is the appointment of Truth Commission that people, six must know as to what happened during that period, who were the persons responsible, and how many people have died. So this, said, I have written that solution is lies in India only. None of the foreign countries, Pakistan will never do it. The Western countries continue to, they will continue to say that our constitution enshrined value of peaceful demonstration, peaceful meetings, etc. We can't do anything. So they can do if they want. They will do it if India joins them to contain China. I've also written here that even in that case, they will relegate Khalistan issue to the back burner for some time as they had done the Tibet issue. During the period, they were able to wean away China from Soviet Union. Once the Soviet Union was dismembered in 90, they gave Nobel Prize to the Dalai Lama. So here I said, okay, the solution lies in India. We must strengthen the hands of vast majority of moderate six living in Western countries so that they can say that we have got something like this. A minuscule minority is taking control of all this and, and creating all these Khalistan problems. So you please appoint Truth Commission and inquire into what had happened during this period so that we have something to show to the moderate six living abroad. All right. So, sir, two, three questions are live viewers have been asked. So, somebody has said that when do you think the Pakistanis and the West actually, what was the moment in your research where the Pakistanis and the West started actually taking an active interest in Khalistan? Or is it the case that with Pakistan, they were always the you know, involved in this and uh, because wa wasn't there a time that they were more interested in Afghanistan and the Soviet war or uh, so when do you think historically did these folks start taking interest? I have written in my book that before 1980, Pakistan operations in India towards that was either intelligence collection or smuggling because Punjabi Sikhs on the border were not at all receptive to any other thing. But general, the creation of problem by one Akbar Lord in Punjab from the 80 onwards coincided with the President Ziaul Haq's appointment as president for 10 years. I have also written 
that had Punjab not been destabilized, the situation in Kashmir would not have gone that bad. Zia took advantage, as they say, K2 problem, Khalistan and Kashmir. Seeing the Indian forces tied down in Punjab, he upgraded the level of Pakistan's intervention in Kashmir. So far as the Western countries are concerned, as I mentioned, till the end of 1980, 1979, there was no Khalistan issue at all. I have mentioned in my book that if the Western countries want to stop this movement, stop these agitations, etc., I have given an example that one group, Republic of Khalistan in London, wanted to take a celebratory procession to celebrate the so-called assassination of Mrs. Gandhi. Their High Commission from India wrote a strong message that if we will allow this thing, our commercial interests of billions of dollars will be damaged. So the, the, the concerned agencies in UK stopped that procession because their commercial interests were involved. Hmm. So do you think Pakistan always tries to hijack this situation by using a very warped logic of, let's say, you know, this is like the ghost of Jinnah's two-nation theory and Pakistan will always try to goad the Sikhs into saying that, oh, you know, you never got your Sikh nation or blah, 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 something of that sort? No, this situation, they could have done before 1980, but nobody listened to them. They wanted to avenge the 1971 bifurcation of Pakistan creation of Bangladesh, and recently Article 370 removed. But we provided them the situation, opportunity to take advantage of that. There was no possibility of any situation arising or Pakistan taking advantage before 1980. As I mentioned earlier, we provided. We gave them this issue on a platter. Hmm. Sir, I mean, there is no doubt that as far as Sikhs are concerned, they are an integral and, un, you know, you know, they are inseparable when it comes to their relationship with India. And now I am outside India right now. As I speak with you, very interestingly, you are in India, I am in America. But uh, I have experienced this, that there is something really off in the diasporic, a section of the diaspora over here, primarily in the Jatsi community. And uh, when you go to India, you don't feel this at all. When you go to India, these sentiments are, I'm not saying there are zero, but they are not as potent as they are over here. I mean, recently in Brampton, we saw that uh, that procession being carried off where the assassination of Indira Gandhi is up, was uh, shown as, uh, uh, as one of the parts of the procession as a prop. And... Do you think uh, that even amongst, if you break it down amongst the caste breakdown, like I don't see this in a Valmiki Gurdwara or a Ravi Dasya Gurdwara in, in Canada or America. They don't seem to be fanning Khalistan, uh, Khalistan sentiments at all. It is very much restricted to a certain membership and a number within the Jatsi community. What do you Actually, make of that? This is a silent majority. They, they just remain silent because... They have nothing to show off, as I mentioned. Once this Truth Commission is appointed, they will encourage, get encouraged to see that the government of India cares for them also. So as I you cannot brush this issue under the carpet. 35,000 to 50,000 Sikhs and Hindus losing their life. But as Sam Patroda had said, that Hua to Hua, the Hua to Hua will not do actually. You have to do something to show that India cares for this thing. So, it is so tempted to any quite, uh, quite a few people are not Jats also. So this is nothing. Jats are dominant community actually. So, but that, that they always take part in all this. But I don't think this is limited only to Jats. There may be a lot of non-Jats Khatris also. If you go by that, but Khatris don't have their separate Gurdwaras. Gurdwaras are common for that. Fair. So, what, sir, ये जो आप Truth Commission की बात कर रहे हैं. Uh, how, who should take the initiative? Uh, do you think it has to be initiated by the government or it has to be more of a civil society thing? Going by the president of South America, it has to be an act of the government, a government parliament act, and pending with that, ordinance has to be issued. So it has to be an act of the government of India. It can be only done at the highest level. Decision had to be taken by a leader who can carry the rest of India. 
And I think the rest of Indians by now already are aware of that a lot of damage has been done uh, during that period which needs to be rectified. So, sir, did you find any rebuttal to your book till now? This is my last question before we wrap it up. Has there been anybody who has stood up to you and tried to rebut you, tried to say, no, you have shared this uh, this thing which is inaccurate or that thing that is inaccurate? Actually, two, three elements are, they did not like my book. Number one, obviously, see, some, see, some leaders may be closer to the family. Uh, but secondly, pro Vindavali people. And there is an ideologue, very well-known ideologue, I don't want to name him. There is a YouTube uh, program he has mentioned for one, one hour or so, in which he has said that my book has done the greatest damage to their cause. He was pro, pro Vindavali. And he said to something, another book has to be written to counter the impression which I have my book has created. But last one and a half years, I'm, no book has appeared. So I don't think any book can be written. It is just truth sometimes is very bitter. So it's bitter and falsehood has only legs of clay, feet of clay. It cannot stand on its own. Well, sir, uh, all I can say before wrapping it up was when I read your book uh, as an ethnic Punjabi, I mean, I am I, I'm, I'm born and raised in Mumbai, so I'm more Marathi than Punjabi in many ways because uh, my birth is in Mumbai. So I'm I'm a Bombay wala Punjabi, so you can understand uh, what I am. So, But uh, uh, there is not one family that we know in Punjab. We still have family in Punjab that has not faced some sort of threat in terms of uh, 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 attempt to kill them or some sort of uh, kidnapping attempt or something of that sort. Every Hindu, Sikh, you name the religion. Uh, it is one of the most horrifying periods that every Punjabi has faced in their life. And it is a very sensitive issue and nobody in Punjab wants that thing to come back. So I actually, when I read your book, it was in many ways for, for many people, I think Punjabis, it will be a, it's a great eye opener and, and it will give a lot of Punjabis closure that at least now they know the truth. So on behalf of them, at least I want to thank you. Well, thank you very much. I hope like, it can make a difference. And your podcast, if it is listened to by such people, it, they will definitely be convinced. Yeah. So, guys, we'll wrap today's discussion up. Uh, you can follow Sidhu sir on social media, but it, believe me, if you have not bought this book, Go and buy this book right now. You you have the Kindle version. You have the hard copy. I mean, depends. I think even Audible pe bhi available hai bhi a book. It is available. It's also available in Punjabi and Hindi also. Yeah, so yeah, it's available in Punjabi and Hindi. So if you want to read this book in Punjabi, go and read it in Punjabi. If you want to go and read this book in Hindi, you can read it in Hindi. If you want to read this in English, you can go and read this in English. This book is a must read. It will bust so many myths, uh, myths about why there was no other option other than entering the golden temple in the way the government of the day decided to enter. No, there were multiple options as uh, Sidhu sir has shown and much with much lesser damage. It shows the dirty uh, politics involved in the creation of Janel Singh Bhindrawale. It also shows the monstrosity of Janel Singh Bhindrawale. Sidhu sir has not uh, spared Janel Singh Bhindrawale either in the book. And, you know, he talks about the massacres that he himself conducted, Janel Singh Bhindrawale, uh, you know, the murders of innocent Sikhs and Hindus, even from their side. And all in all, this book will open your eyes and expose you to the truth. So please go and buy this book. It is, it is a must read. Or if you're an audible person, a must listen. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, please support the Charvak podcast. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you can become a member on, on YouTube, Patreon, Fanmo, wherever, please do that. If you're an audio listener, do leave a rating on Spotify and iTunes or Google Podcasts, wherever you are. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, namaste, satsikal, take care, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.